Hey everyone, today, we're diving into the fascinating world of energy efficient supercomputing. Imagine supercomputers that use less energy while getting faster, smarter, and smaller. But how? By harnessing something called charge density waves, a technique inspired by how our brain neurons work. Let's explore this groundbreaking research from Argonne National Laboratory that could revolutionize microelectronics and supercomputing. Welcome to Trend Storm. Chapter 1. What are charge density waves? So, what exactly are charge density waves? These are wave-like patterns of electrons, the negatively charged particles, that move in sync across certain materials. These waves increase resistance in the material, and what's really exciting is that scientists have figured out how to switch this resistance on and off using electricity. This process could lead to next-gen, energy-efficient computing, and even precise sensing technologies. Chapter 2. The Need for Energy-Efficient Supercomputing why does this matter? Well, today's supercomputers consume massive amounts of energy. We're talking about the energy needs of thousands of homes just to run one of these machines. As the demand for computational power grows, it's crucial to find ways to make supercomputing more energy efficient. And this is where artificial neural networks come in. These networks, designed to mimic the brain's neurons, could be enhanced using charge density waves to save energy while boosting performance. Chapter 3. Breakthrough at Argonne National Laboratory Researchers at the Argonne National Laboratory have made an exciting discovery. Using an ultrafast electron microscope, they've found a way to capture nanosecond changes in materials, specifically, a material called 1-TTAS2, or tantalum sulfide. What makes this material special is its ability to form charge density waves at room temperature, which is ideal for practical applications. They applied short electrical pulses to a tiny flake of this material, expecting the electric current to be the driving force behind the resistance switching. But here's where the surprise comes in. The charge density waves actually melted due to the heat generated by the current, not the current itself. And on top of that, the waves started vibrating, much like how a drumhead vibrates when you strike it. Chapter 4. Neural Network Mimicry This melting and vibrating response is especially important because it mimics how neurons in the brain are activated. When neurons fire, they send electrical signals, and this material's behavior could be used to create neuron-like firing signals in a neural network. Imagine supercomputers working more like the human brain, but with a fraction of the energy consumption. Chapter 5. Implications for Microelectronics This new microscopy technique is a game-changer. By observing the nanoscale and nanosecond dynamics of charge density waves, researchers can better understand how to control these waves for microelectronic applications. The ability to switch the material's resistance on and off quickly could lead to smaller, faster, and more energy efficient devices. Everything from supercomputers to everyday electronics. The material, 1 TTAS2, is particularly appealing because it can be formed into nanoscale layers, making it ideal for the miniaturized devices of the future. And according to Charadatta Fadik, a materials scientist at Argonne, this breakthrough has broad applications, potentially allowing us to apply similar control mechanisms to other materials as well. It's amazing to think that something as simple as charge density waves could hold the key to revolutionizing computing making our devices not only faster but also far more energy efficient. Source. Argonne National Laboratory.
So, what do you think? Do you believe that charge density waves could be the key to creating the next generation of supercomputers? Could we see this technology in our phones, computers, or even wearable tech someday? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a conversation. Also, if you have any questions about how this research mimics brain neurons or how it could impact the future of energy efficient computing, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to dive deeper into these exciting scientific topics. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on the latest in science and tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comments and in the next video.